Today, I'm going to cover some pretty essential knowledge when it comes to routing in Next.js, private folders, co-location, route groups, and some different things when it comes to project organization that I think are very important to understand. But first, we're just going to create a new Next.js application. So I'm going to run in my terminal here within VS Code, npx create next app at latest and then I'm going to say essential routing is my project's name. I'm not going to use TypeScript for this just to show you guys some examples. No ESLint either. I guess I'll use Tailwind CSS, but it's not important. I'm not going to use an SRC directory. I am going to use the app router and I'm not going to customize the default import alias. So it's going to create this project quick and then we will go file open and then open this within VS code. So the new project is opened here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just run NPM run dev within my root of my project here. And then I'm going to open up localhost and you can see that it is running here on localhost 3000, which is the template Next.js application. Now, the very first thing I'm going to show you is how do you create a route? For a lot of you, this might already be very straightforward and familiar with. So we are going to cover some more kind of advanced things. But just so we're all on the same page here to create a route within your app folder and this is specific to using the the app directory in next.js opposed to the pages directory so using kind of the modern ver versions of next.js create an app folder and then create a new folder within the app folder and let's just create a settings folder and then to create a route we're going to create a page.js file within this folder and that is going to create us a route automatically for whatever the name of this folder is. So at forward slash settings, we're going to show whatever is returned within this page.js file. So I'm going to export default function settings page, and then we're going to return an H1 that says settings page. And I spelled default incorrectly, but there we go. So now if I go to forward slash settings within my URL, you can see the settings page. And then if I wanted to create an admin page, then within my app directory, I just create another folder called admin. And then within admin, I would create a page.jsx file, export a default function called admin page. And it doesn't need to follow the naming structure of like admin page for the name of your function. This can really be named anything. This could just be named admin or it could be named some page. It, it really doesn't matter, but just for consistency, I will do admin page and we'll just return another H1 called admin page. And then if I go to forward slash admin, you're going to see admin page. And then I have other videos to where we go into nested routes, dynamic routes, that's in one of my routing videos that I actually just created. So to check out nested and dynamic routes, go see that video. But one thing I want to show you here is that what if you want to create a folder, but you don't want to create a new route? Well, in Next.js, that's totally fine to do. So within the app directory, we could create a new components folder, and then we could create files in this folder. So like a button.jsx component, and I can export default function button that maybe it takes a title prop and then just returns a button element with a title and renders out a button. Well, if we go to forward slash components here, we're, we're not creating a public route here. So if I go to forward slash components, you see, I get a not found page because within this components folder, we didn't add a page.js file or TS or TSX. So we didn't add that page dot file within this folder. So this folder is not going to be a public route. So you're free to create whatever folders you want within your app directory. And they're only going to become routes within your application. If you create a page.jsx file within that folder. Now you can also be more explicit about this. So say you wanted this components folder, you wanted to like explicitly say that it's not going to be public. Well, we could rename this to underscore components. 
And then even if we add a page.jsx file to this underscore components folder here, and then I export to default function components page, and we return an H1 saying components page, and I try to go to underscore components, what you're going to see is that I still get a not found right here. So you can see I'm at underscore components and it's still not working. Even if I try components, still not working. And that is because when we add this underscore, it's going to make this a private folder. So even if we add a page.jsx file within this underscore components folder, it's not going to make it a public route. It's still going to remain private as we're seeing here in this behavior. So underscore components is still a 404. So that's a nice way to kind of be explicit about this folder here. It's not a potentially public route. It is just a private folder. And I actually really like this. I haven't been using this a ton in previous projects, but I do like that it's explicitly saying that this is not going to be a public route because if you just look at this, so if I rename this to just components and then I remove the page dot JSX file here. Well, if I just look at my project structure here, it's not 100% clear to me which one of these folders are going to be like public routes and pages and which one of these folders are just going to be like private folders. So adding that underscore in front of it, I actually really like how explicit that is. One other thing to keep in mind here is that we ne wouldn't necessarily need to create a components folder at all. Like we could put our components just within the folder that uses them. So for this admin folder, let's say we wanted to create like an admin dashboard component and render that within this admin page. Well, we can just create a new file within admin called admin dashboard.jsx and then export a default function admin dashboard. And then we're, we're going to just pretend that this is going to contain a lot of code for an admin dashboard. But for now, we're just going to render a P tag that says admin dashboard. And then we are going to just use that within our admin page.jsx. So instead of just rendering an H1 here, let's go ahead and render a maybe a section tag. And then I will move this H1 into our section tag. And then I will render an admin dashboard component. So now if we go to admin, what you're going to see is admin page and admin dashboard. But if I try to go to like admin dashboard here in the URL and we try that here. So admin dashboard, you're going to see nothing is found because this file isn't going to be a public file. We're just using this component within our page.jsx file. So all that's going to show publicly here at this forward slash admin route is what is returned in this page.jsx. So we're fine to create this admin dashboard file within this admin folder. So that's a way that you can kind of co-locate components within your project. If you have components that you're only going to use within a certain route segment, then it might not be a bad idea to just put that component within whatever like folder or whatever route segment that you'll be using that component in. And then for maybe more general components, you keep them in like a components folder or an underscore components folder, depending on how explicit you want to be about things. And, you know, I, I don't have super strong opinions on this either way. I've generally just been putting all of my components in a components folder, but I've also played around with just like co-locating components right next to where I'm going to be using them within a certain page. And that is really nice. But I often find myself wanting to then reuse those components elsewhere. So say I want to use the admin dashboard within the settings page. Well, then it starts to get a little bit messy and I end up needing to pull that admin dashboard into a more general components folder and kind of do things like that. But generally, I, I think it's a decent idea to kind of co-locate stuff close to where you're going to use it. I, I think that's still a reasonable approach. Now, there's one other thing that I want to show you when it comes to like project organization and some of these routing strategies. So we've covered how to create a route, how to create a private folder, how to co-locate components and 
kind of why that's okay and it's early straightforward to do and kind of what makes her out public. But what if you have a situation to where, what if we wanted to add another route here and we will call this customers and then say, I just want to have a page.jsx file within my customers folder. So I'm gonna move this page.jsx within my customers folder. And then for this page.jsx, I'm gonna just call this customer settings. And then I'm gonna say customer settings page. So what if I just wanted to use this settings folder as like an organization tool? So say I want to have like customer settings and then maybe like another folder within this for like partner and have like a partner settings page. So I'll create a new page.jsx, export a default function called partner settings, and then just return an each one called partner settings. So I have a customer settings page and then a partner settings page. So this might be like, you know, for different companies, they could access this settings page and like customize their, the look and feel of their website or something. I don't know, something like that. Well, you might have these different settings pages and you just want to organize them within a settings folder, but you don't necessarily want the settings folder to impact the routes. So right now, the way that you can access this customer settings is forward slash settings, forward slash customers. And the way that you can access this partner settings is forward slash settings, forward slash partner. And to prove to you, I'm not lying to you. Let's go to settings, forward slash customer. And we see that I get a 404 not found. So let me see if I messed it up. So it's actually customers. So if I go to customers, I also don't see this page and I see that I added a third T to settings. It's very interesting spelling, Ryan. So now if I go to this page, I do indeed see it. So we have our customer settings page in our partner settings page. But like I said, what if I just want my settings folder to like organize these settings pages, but I don't necessarily want that to show up in the, the route here. Like what if I just want to be like forward slash partner? and forward slash customer, and that takes them to the settings page. Well, the way that you can do this is I can create just a route group here. So for settings, I can rename this and I can make this left parenthesis, right parenthesis, so wrapping settings in parentheses here. It's basically telling Next.js that I just want to use settings folder here for organizational purposes. I don't necessarily want it to show up in my URL. If I go to forward slash customers and forward slash partner, I should see those settings pages, but they're just organized within this settings route group. This is called a route group in Next.js. I'm just grouping these routes together for like project organization, but I don't want my settings to show up in my URL is what I'm basically telling Next.js. So now it's, I'm getting a 404 because we've made this a route group. So if I just go to forward slash partner right now, I see my partner settings page because it's just grouped within the settings folder. We've taken settings out of the route URL. And if I go to forward slash customers, we see the customer settings page. So that's also a really nice tool that you can use to just kind of organize your project without really affecting the public URL that you're, you're actually going to be going to and showing to the user. So today you've kind of learned maybe slightly more advanced things where you can now create private folders using an underscore. So even if, you know, within this components folder, like I showed you, if we create a page.jsx within components, but it's underscore components, it's still not going to show that. So we're explicitly saying that that is a private folder. And then also you are free to co-locate your components to where if I create this admin dashboard component within this admin folder, that's totally fine to do. I'm not creating another route here at admin forward slash admin dashboard. The only thing that's going to render here is what I return here within this admin page. So co-location is totally okay. And then if you want to like group your route segments together, but you don't want to affect the URL, you can create a route group by taking the name of the folder and wrapping that in parentheses, which is going to create a route group. And it's not going to 
include that within the overall URL path for these different route segments. So hopefully that helped. I know that I don't have super strong opinions about how you organize your projects, but what I would recommend is that you're knowledgeable of all these different kind of tools to organize your project and how all this works. I think that is really important. And then whatever you decide, just be consistent with it. Like right now, I'm kind of leaning towards liking using private folders for components. And then if I need to kind of group things together using route groups here, but I think it comes down to just what you prefer most and using something that kind of makes sense and that you're consistent with. So hopefully you learned something in this video. I appreciate you watching and I will see you in that next one.